Hey y'all, it's Laura, and welcome back to Scrap Timber. Today's the very last day of our Video A Day Marathon. This has been a long collaboration with the wonderful Scrappy Sisters and all of our amazing guest designers, and I thought we'd go out on a bang. So today's prompt is unusual size. I'm going to be doing two 6x12 layouts. Now, I do 6x12s every once in a while, but it's certainly not something that I do all of the time, so I definitely thought it fit in that unusual size category. And I decided for this one that I would try to keep it pretty simple. So I have fussy cut a whole bunch of hearts out of the papers from the Amy Tangerine Picnic in the Park collection. I love that about Amy Tan's collections that she has so many fussy cuttable things. And in this case, I used patterned hearts here. And then in the moment, I'll pull out some glitter paper hearts that were on the specialty paper for this collection and kind of alternate between the two for my background. Now I do layouts like this pretty frequently, especially for my quick six by six tricks videos where I use a six by six paper pad as inspiration for the entire page and don't use any other larger pieces of paper. It's a really fun series. I have a playlist that I'll link below for you if you are interested in checking those out. But before I forget, I want to make sure you know that our wonderful guests today are Lisa Brooks and Crafty Maggie. So I will have them linked in the description box below. So be sure to check out their wonderful creations for today's unusual size prompt as well. And we have a Scrap Timber Facebook group where we have been posting prompts all month long, engaging with lots of fun people, seeing their takes on the prompts. It's been really, really fun. And we plan on keeping the fun going all year long. So be sure to join us on Facebook at the Scrap Timber Facebook group and join us. Now back to the layout, I am doing rows of hearts here. And after I got these in place, I realized this looked a little bit busy with the bigger hearts in the glitter style. So I decided to go with some smaller hearts, but I'm going to give the appearance of stitching through these hearts without actually doing any stitching because I am not friends with my sewing machine. I am determined to figure it out eventually, but I'm not in a hurry. So for now, we're gonna do a little bit of faux stitching by way of drawing a line. Now these two photos are very, very different, obviously, but they're both of me. And the left photo, I am just enjoying sitting at my desk, preparing homeschool work for the kids, and having a rather lovely hair day. So I decided to take a photo. In the other photo, however, I am doing a breathing treatment for pneumonia. And last year, last, last two years, I really, really struggled with getting sick over and over and over again. Any of you that were on my channel knows I was out a lot because I kept getting these sinus infections that would make me really, really sick. And I kept getting pneumonia. I got it like three times in one year, which is crazy, crazy. And so the doctor finally gave me this breathing treatment and it worked and it helped immensely. And I ended up having to get surgery to correct something with my head. <laughs> in my sinuses that would clean it out and, and essentially just make it so that I wasn't getting sick all the time. And thank goodness for that. But I thought I would document this little journey I had because it was definitely a part of my life, especially in 2018. It was a huge part of my life then and something that I did really, really struggle with. And I wanted to document that. I wanted to talk a little bit about this path that led to me having fairly minor surgery, really, but to me it was major. For me it was a big deal, and I, I wanted to incorporate that in my album, even if in a small way, like this 6x12 layout. Now to create this background design in a fairly balanced format, I decided to go ahead and cut the hearts in half along the left side, and then take that leftover piece and pop it over to the right side. And I find that this sort of background, where you have it going off of the edges, sliding off of the page, really has a bigger impact than if I had just had the hearts perfectly inside of the rectangle and didn't have them overlapping the sides at all. So I really liked that design. I'm going to use one of the frames from this ephemera pack and put my journaling spot inside. Now I don't normally leave the taping in my videos, but I thought this would be interesting to you guys to see that I'm just going to be taping in this little journaling spot here and then tucking in the part with the gap, that little 
pool there behind my photo. So that is the plan. I'm going to have this kind of sneaky journaling spot just peeking out from behind my photo so that I can tell my story about how I went through all of these crazy, crazy illnesses and was able to get better thanks to what's happening in this photo, which was a breathing treatment. One of the downsides, however, of that breathing treatment was I have ADHD, if you don't know, and this medication apparently makes you really hyper. And when I got home, I about bounced off the walls, <laughs> which was a very strange feeling when you're really ill, but you all have all of this impossibly difficult to contain energy and you just want to just run and jump and you're just jittery and crazy and wild and then you're also unable to breathe. So it was a really strange experience, but it did help and it helped a lot. And I was very, very thankful that my doctor did go ahead and give me that medication. It was very strange to take though, I have to tell you, that experience of having to breathe it in like that. I've never taken a medication like that. And it was just one of those experiences where I thought, you know, some people have to do this probably all the time if they have lung issues, if they have major sinus infections all the time, they probably have to use this. And how weird that must feel to have that strange, overwhelming burst of anxiety and energy and, and just uh, uncontained need to move, jitteriness. It was so strange. Uh, I don't drink a lot of coffee, so I'm not familiar with that super jittery feeling that my husband swears he gets. <laughs> but let me know, have you ever had this kind of breakthrough moment where you're like, wow, some people have to do this all the time, or maybe you have to do it all the time. And what that feels like, knowing that you have to do this sort of treatment, to take care of your body, take care of yourself, but it doesn't make you feel good right away. It makes you kind of overwhelmed at first. And I would love to hear from you guys. Say, what, what did you experience or what have you experienced that's kind of like that, that's just like you've, something new, it helped, but at the same time it was hard to do. I don't know if I'm explaining that great, but and I did bring in some of those stickers from the sticker sheets. One of the nice things about Amy Tan's collections and several of the American Crafts collections is they have these little sticker sheets, which are really nice. They have tiny embellishments as well as some larger ones. And that's a nice balance because a lot of the American Crafts collections have giant pieces in their ephemera packs now. And so it's really nice to have these sticker sheets that have the smaller icons, things like labels and tabs and banners and just little bitty scattering pieces like tiny florals and hearts and stars and things like that that can kind of balance out your embellishment clusters or that you can again use for scattering, which is a lot of what I use them for. Now I did decide to go ahead and add a small title here that says pretty much perfect, which is a bit of sarcasm, which I don't use very often. I'm not super good at sarcasm and I don't always catch sarcasm. So <laughs> I just thought it would be kind of funny to pop that on there because obviously by looking at this photo, it was not pretty much perfect in that moment. And so I thought that would be a little cheeky to put on there. And so I went for it. Adding in some florals here and there just for a bit of fun. And this layout isn't too much longer before we switch to the other side. Now these are actually photos from two different years. Uh, the first photo on the left is from 2017 when I first started uh, my YouTube channel and was at that point still homeschooling my older three kids. And I really, really <laughs> was excited to homeschool, but also very stressed because I had all three of my older kids and my twins at home. And it was, it was very, very stressful. But I was really excited about this new path into my YouTube channel and being able to share my scrapbooking with all of you. Because let me tell you, for the longest time, I did not have any scrappy friends. I had a few ladies at church who scrapped, but they did really like the, the creative memory style scrapping and they didn't really get into my style of scrapping. And so it was kind of hard to chat with them about, oh, the newest collections that have come out or, hey, there's new technique I wanna try or have you tried mixed media? Because I guarantee they have not. <laughs> <laughs> Bless their hearts. They had their style and it worked for them and it still works for them. And I think that's awesome. I think it's awesome that they have a style that makes them happy. They have a process. 
that makes them happy. And I think that's brilliant. But at the same time, when I'm doing something really different, it's kind of fun to be able to bounce ideas off of people or uh, just get some suggestions or say, hey, I like that idea. Just be able to compare notes, you know, and that's really hard to do that with someone who doesn't scrap the same way you do or isn't really interested in the way that you scrap. Does that make sense? I hope so. <laughs> but I'm adding some of these little punched glitter hearts. Now in this collection from Amy Tangerine, there was a huge specialty paper of glitter. And mostly there were brightly colored glitter hearts in several sizes, but the background was white glitter. And if you think I'm not gonna punch out tiny little white glitter hearts, you don't know me very well. <laughs> I do love every opportunity to use every last little bit of pattern paper that I can use and glitter paper. You better believe I get every last bit of that used up. So coming in with some teeny, teeny, tiny little puffy stickers to finish off my clusters and add a little bit of scattering before we get to the splattering because that is how I finish just about every layout is a little bit of scattering and splattering where I add the tiny details that make the layout feel complete. Now this one is kind of nice. It does have some birds and like popsicles on there and I'm not sure yet how I'm going to use those. But it also has some really tiny little florals and really, really tiny little hearts that are kind of perfect. Now I did want to bring in one of these little clips that were also from the collection. It's kind of like a teeny tiny super flat paper clip and it's got a little flower on top. So I thought let's just tuck it into the cluster on top and add a little bit of Nouveau just for fun. This is what I call my controlled splattering. So if you're not comfortable with my crazy ink splatter at the end, you can always try Nouveau, which you can add little dots in purposeful places and in your own controlled sizes, wherever you want to lay out, it has the same effect. Now, sometimes I do both just because I like to be a bit extra with my layouts. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> So here's that Heidi Swap Color Shine in gold that I'm going to splatter just kind of around the center section of the layout just because that is where the main focal point is. And then we'll get started on layout number two. And don't forget to add a comment to some of my videos this month so you can be entered into the Scrap Timber giveaway that I'm doing here on the channel to celebrate my third year anniversary sharing these fun, exciting projects with all of you here on YouTube. Now for this layout, I wasn't exactly exactly sure what I wanted to do, but I knew I kind of wanted to play with this color scheme of these florals and this purple because it kind of goes pretty well with the shirt that I'm wearing in that photo and I thought it would be kind of fun. And then I found this journaling spot in a larger size that I would used on the other one and decided, you know what, this is perfect. Let's go ahead and just make this the whole background. I'll map my photo with this purple paper and we'll do some minor embellishing and bing, bang, boom, it's done. I do add a little bit more than that because you know I do. I have so much trouble leaving layouts simple. I just wanna keep adding and adding and adding all of the things. So now that everything's all taped down in place, I'm gonna reach for the thickers, which are actually foam instead of chipboard, which I'm actually a really big fan of because foam inside of your album will give a little bit more than chipboard and it isn't quite as bulky in your album. It does squish a little <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. And I think that's just better for your album overall rather than having that stiff chipboard that it does not have give and does add a lot of thick bulk to your album. And so I'm just gonna stick with the foam. I just like it better. Ch typically if I use chipboard, I tend to rip off the extra layers in the back to make it as thin as possible and then just stick it down with glue like ephemera. So now I'm gonna create this little cluster next to this title. I do end up extending that title a little bit and making it a little bigger. But at first I thought, you know what? I have a really good smile in this picture. So let's go ahead and use this smile, which came from those foam thickers. And then of course I'm going back to those sticker sheets because on a six by 12 layout, you really don't have a great deal of space for large embellishments. I mean, if you want your photo to stand out, then you have to keep your embellishing fairly simple. And I'm gonna put most of my embellishing around my photos because again, that draws it into that focus image and make sure my photo gets all of the attention and not the pretty embellishments. So I am going to move this little banner flag, which was rather risky to do because it could have damaged my photo. Luckily it didn't. And I'm going to move it up here to the top. It does kind of blend in a little bit with that floral background, but I do like having that kind of a vertical flow. It's almost like a 
vertical flow and a triangle flow at the same time because it is so long and skinny. And I'll have a big cluster here next to my photo and then another small one at the bottom. And that, for some reason, was really exciting to my eye at the time, so I just went for it. And some of the stickers are clear stickers. So you see I'm sticking a floral here back behind my photo that you can see quite clearly onto the journaling card below because it is a nice clear sticker. Some of those I will pop onto white cardstock that I don't want to be clear and then just fussy cut them out. I do that really frequently with clear stickers because that's just the easiest way for me to use them. Uh, I don't 100% of the time use white cardstock as a background, probably 50% of the time. The other half, I use pattern paper backgrounds and clear stickers and pattern paper backgrounds very rarely get along. So I tend to put them on the cardstock instead. That way they stand out just like a regular cardstock sticker or a piece of ephemera would. Now I decided to add in this little hello and that's not part of this collection. I'm actually not really sure where that came from, but it was mixed in with the fussy cut ephemera that I had cut up from pattern papers in this collection. So I decided it seems to match. So we'll just go ahead and use it and uh, go from there. Now I don't add a ton more embellishment to this one, mostly just scattering and splattering, but I do want to take a moment to remind you that we uh, have 30 days of videos up this month. So if you missed any, you can just fly back into my channel. I have a playlist with all 30 videos in it. The Scrappy Sisters have all the videos up on their channel, and we have guests for every single day of this marathon of scrapping and have had an absolute blast in the process. So I really hope you have enjoyed it. I would love to hear what you think about the 6x12 size. I know it's not a typical size to scrap, it can sometimes be difficult to get a hold of the page protectors for this size, but I do know that Becky Higgins has some Project Life version out there. Uh, those are the ones that I use. But I've also heard that there's an American Crafts version that they use for the thickers. So either one will work. They're the same size. And I really hope that a company comes out with a uh, mass production of those sizes because I actually really enjoy this size for little stories like this where I don't have four photos. I don't have a lot of journaling to say. I just have this one small photo that I want to scrap and include, but isn't necessarily a super important photo. So that's it for this one. With some scattering and splattering, I'm done. Until next time, bye guys!